Hey guys, it's Todd. Welcome to lesson 2.0 of Let's Learn C++. This is the first lesson of chapter 2, obviously. I want to learn about if statements. Now, if statements are a type of control structure that controls program. Control structures are just ways of controlling what your computer does and how it does it and when it do does it, um, and based on conditions. So, excuse me, we're going to update our calculator program. As you can see, it's the same program we normally do. Enter two numbers, uh, except this time we're going to have them choose an operation. So as you can see, I have a char up here, a character named operation for our variable, and we're going to see an value into that. Now, we need to create an if statement down here, which we're going to say if operation is equal to, now notice the double equal sign. The single op equal sign is the assignment operator. It assigns a value to a variable, whereas the double uh, equal sign uh, it compares two values. So we're going to compare the value of our variable operation and the value of our character of a plus sign. So notice how the plus sign is in between two apostrophes. When you're dealing with a character, you put it in between two apostrophes for a control structure. So then we put these things. And basically what this is saying is this value in here is the condition. And it's going to be evaluated to be either true or false. And if it's evaluated to be true, then it's going to execute all of the code inside these, these two brackets. If it's evaluated to be false, it's going to skip those brackets. So let's go ahead and put a comment in here. Do some code. So let's be lazy and copy and paste this three more times. All right. So now this one's going to be minus, this one's going to be times, and this one's going to be division. Now, for the second, third, and fourth, we're all going to say else if, else if, else if. This saves processing power. And you'll learn how to, how to deal with all this and know when to put else, when to put else if, when to put if, when to not put anything like that. Um, but for now, we're going to put else if. So, so just know that this one's going to be evaluated to be true or false. If it's true, it's going to do this code and skip all three of these. If it's evaluated to be false, it's going to go to this one. And then this one's going to be evaluated to be true or false. If it's true, it's going to do this code and skip these two. If it's false, it's going to skip this one and go to this one. This is, then this one's going to be evaluated true or false. If it's true, it's going to do this code in here. And then it's going to skip this one. If this is false, then it'll skip this, and it'll go to this one to be evaluated, true or false. If this one's true, it'll execute this code and skip the next one. If this is false, then it's going to go down here and do the final one called the else statement. Now, it's not else if, it's just else, and there's no condition. Basically, the else statement is just, if none of the above are true, do this. So, let's go ahead and put in some things to do. So, if this, if they put in a plus sign, what are we going to want to do? We're going to add the value, the variable. So we're going to say see out num1 plus num2 equals num1 plus num2. So we need our, our shift operators here. Just write down an equation for us there. And me being a programmer, changes to a minus, changes to a minus, changes to an asterisk, changes to a slash, change this to an asterisk, changes to a slash. There we go. All right, so now. Basically, it's going to add them if they put a plus, a minus, blah, 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 blah. And if they don't put either of those four, then we're gonna, then that means that they put in a wrong value, human error. So we're going to say invalid input. So now we have our if-else structure. Let's see what it does. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, crap, oh, crap. Error on my part. Cn.get return zero.
Let's turn over one and eight. Let's turn operation plus one plus eight equals two. Now that is incorrect. One plus eight is nine. Okay. Now, it turns out I had an error in my code. Um, right here, I had dumb one. All right, so for operation, all right, so if I enter a plus sign, what's it going to do? It's going to say C out num1 plus eh, num1 plus num2 equals num1 plus num2. So now, Copy paste, lazy programmer. I'm a very lazy programmer. Minus, minus, times, times, divide, divide. Now, if they don't, if they don't enter any one of these four, what does that mean? It means they put invalid input. So we're going to tell them straight up. Invalid input. Human error, morons. Okay. F5. Let's run this baby. One and eight. What's M? One plus eight equals nine. F5. Four and six minus. Should give you negative two. There you go. Oh, let's run it again. Six and seven. Uh, let's multiply. 6 times 7 equals 42. Very good. F5. 8 and 4. Divide. Gives you 2. Good, 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 good. Alright, so we can see that our if, our if else structure works perfectly. Now, we'll see what happens when we input an invalid 5 and 3 and maybe percent sign. Invalid input. Good, good. Alright, so notice CN with no ignore, cn no ignore, cn no ignore, but at the end I have one ignore, and it works perfectly. The reason why I've been having you put ignore throughout after every scene is just to stress what it does, um, but really you only need to have the one at the end to clear the buffer, so that way you can do the cn.get. Unless there's some other time in the, in the thing where you need to pause it, but um, if you're just trying to pause at the end, you really only need cn.ignore at the end, and then cn.net get to clear the buffer and then pause it um, but anyway uh, there's one more thing I want to teach you for this lesson just one more operator and then I'll close it off and I'll teach you the other operators later on in chapter 2 so um, let's see I'm just gonna erase all of this and I'm gonna say int num1 Enter, enter a five. Cn num one. If num one is equal to five, notice how there's no apostrophes because it's an integer. And then we're going to say, good job, because they know how to follow instructions. Following instructions is one of the most important things you can do in your life. Very valuable skill. So we're going to enter a 5. We're going to be pretty good. Well, we get a good job. That not nice pat on the head. All right, F5 again. We're going to enter 4. Notice how it doesn't do anything, because it doesn't go inside. Now, the operator I want to teach you is 
going to revolve around this. Don't enter a 5. So we need to change this to say if num1 is not equal to 5, then say good job. So the operator for not is the exclamation point. So we're going to say not equal to, not equal to, not equal sign. An exclamation point and equal sign is the not equal to operator. If num1 is not equal to 5, then say good job. So let's run this. Let's put 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Good job. We didn't enter 5. Now let's say negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Good job. Now let's say 5. Uh, we're terrible at following instructions, so we didn't get anything. No pat on the head. Okay. Well, that's all I wanted to teach you for this lesson. Uh, the next lesson, I'm going to teach you more operators, and I'm going to teach you another control structure. Be excited. It's going to be a fun lesson. Thanks for watching, guys.